Bruchem Aboim. We are now on the uh, tenth lecture on the, um, actually ninth, on the le- on the Gematria series. And again, Bruchem Aboim, thank you for coming. And today, the uh, letter that we're going to deal with is the letter Zion, the seventh letter in the uh, Hebrew alphabet. The numerical letter value of the letter Zion is seven. The morale of Prague states that the world is represented by the number six, but creation was not finished until there was a seventh day, a day of rest from the mundane, a day of involvement with the godly. The measure states that all sevens are beloved. We also read in Mishle, the Sheva Tipol Tzadik Vikom, that seven times a righteous person falls, only to rise again. And the word Sheva, seven, is also related to the word Sovea, which means satisfied, to denote the situation where one has finally attained one's desires. In the grace after meal, the Birchat Hamazon, the word Hazan, who provides sustenance, is the seventh word in the first blessing. According to the Ashkenazic text, this blessing actually possesses 57 words, which is the gematria, the miracle value of the word Zon, sustenance or sustains. In both the Sephardic text and according to the Arizal, the verse, Pokeach es yodech amazbiya l'chol chayrotzdan, he who extends his hand and gives everything its needs, again alluding to God, is added. And it's a verse which has seven words. The middle word of umazbiya, which means and satisfies, derives from the same three-letter root as the number seven, Sheba. You can hear it. The letter Zion is an allusion to God, who hazan es hakol, who he who nourishes all, as we say in the grace after meal. The name Zion may also be translated as the word z- weapon. There is no coincidence that the letter Zion is symbolically representative of both sustenance and armament. The two concepts are related to each other. The Zion is shaped like a spear, indicating the man's sustenance is obtained by his struggle. Rabbi Shimshu of Hirsch points out that the word lechem, meaning bread, is connected to the word milchama, war. You can hear, the, again, the words. But there are times a man must struggle for his existence. The physical enjoyment of the Shabbat is signified by the way the Zion appears in the Torah scroll. It is adorned with three crowns, each in the form of a tiny Zion. They symbolize the three ways by which the Shabbat should be set apart from the rest of the week. They are with fine food, drink, and clothing. In Ivrit, in Hebrew, we see the number seven alluded to in the special items that we use to sanctify the Shabbat. One of the things we have is a nair, a candle. Again, now we have what's called mispar cotton, where we drop zeros according to Kabbalah counting. So even if a number is, for example, nair is 50 and 200, we drop the zeros, which makes it 5 and 2. Again, 7. Wine has a numerical value of yayin, yud, yud, and nun, 10, 10, and 50. Again, 1, 1, and 5, 7. Challah, the bread that we eat, is 8, 30, and 5, 4, and 3, which is 43, 4, and 3, 7. We also have a custom of having fish, dog, at a Shabbos table. Again, dog is four and three, seven. We also have busser, meat, two, three hundred, and two hundred. Again, two, three, and two, seven. So again, all of these things for Shabbat are all sanctified that we use for the day. Now, the completion of the world in seven days parallels the seven primary spherot, divine emanations, which are called midot, character traits, divine attributes. They are kindness, severity, beauty, victory, splendor, foundation, and kingship. These seven emotional traits connect to the seven limbs of the body. The right hand, again, to kindness. The left hand, to severity. The upper trunk of the body, to beauty. The right leg, to victory. The left leg, to splendor. And the male organ, to foundation. All of these, six, are masculine. And the seventh trait, which is kingship, malchut, which is feminine, alludes to the female womb. Shabbat is connected to the feminine trait of kingship because a woman is the true giver 
And so too it is through the Shabbat that the whole week is sustained. There are seven openings in a person's head. Again, we believe the soul resides in the head, in the brain. There are two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and a mouth. There is a Kabbalistic belief that the seven midots, emotional traits that God has taken upon himself, are connected to the seven days of the week. And people born on these days are connected to the trait of that day that they are born on. For example, let's say someone was born on Sunday. They are usually more prone to the attribute of kindness. Those born on Monday have predilection towards severity and so on. The word shavua, oath, is related to the word sheva, which is seven. The function of an oath is to impose or to reinforce a commitment. It creates a lasting and enduring set of circumstances. We see this in the Torah when Abramavinu, Abraham our father, and Avimelech, the king of the Gror, made a covenant after their dispute regarding the, the wells that Abraham had dug. Seven sheep were used to formalize their agreement. The location of that agreement that was then called the Er Shava, literally meaning well of oath and well of seven, seven sheep, again, which exists today, Be'er Sheva. The holiday of Shavuot alludes to both oaths and weeks. First, the oath that we made to God not to take on ourselves another God, and the oath that God has taken on himself not to take replace us with another nation. The holiday also connects to the seven weeks of counting the Omer in preparation to receive the Torah. Through the number seven, we strive to reach spiritual perfection. The Torah is replete with connection to the number seven. I'm going to go through a bunch of things that we have that were not only considered Ruth better than seven sons. Yisro had seven names. He also had seven daughters. Achashverosh, the king of Persia, had seven advisors. And Queen Esther had seven maidservants. A coin, a priest, is obligated to defy himself for seven relatives. A Jewish slave can only work for six years, and in the seventh year, he goes free. Cain would not be punished for his sin of killing Hevel for seven generations. The one who killed him would receive a sevenfold punishment. A farmer would have to leave his feed field fallow for seven years, on this part for the seventh year, which was called the Shemitah. And seven Shemitah cycles would culminate in a jubilee year, referred to as Yovel. A menstruant woman must observe seven clean days, also a Zav or a Zava. One who is defiled by touching or being under the same roof of a, as a dead body has to undergo a seven-day period of purification. Same is true for a Mitzorah, a leper. We also see there are seven liquids that prepare something to become defiled. It's known from the word Yad, Shachadam, which stands for the, an acronym for the seven liquids, which are wine, honey, oil, milk, dew, blood, and water. Again, these prepare something to become defiled if they go on something and get it wet, even if it once it's dried. Yaakov, our father, worked for Lovin for seven years for both Leah and Rachel. Yosef interpreted Paro's dreams with seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Moshe argued with God for seven days before he accepted his mission to take the children of Israel out of Egypt. Each of the plagues were brought upon the Egyptians in Egypt and lasted seven days. There were three patriarchs, four matriarchs of the Jewish nation, seven. There are seven generations from Abraham to Moses. There were seven female prophetess, Sarah, Miriam, Devorah, Hannah, Abigail, Hulda, and Esther, basing them on Megillah. There are seven principal names of God, that must be respected and cannot be erased. The Kala, a bride, circles her, her uh, uh, groom, the Chassan, under the Chuppah, the canopy, seven times. There are seven days of Sheva Brachas after a marriage and seven days of Shiva after a person dies. There are seven parties in a man's household that he is responsible for their rest on the Shabbat. There are seven men called up to the Torah to, to be read on the Shabbat. There are seven additional rabbinic laws. When we talk about 613 commandments, we say there are seven more to make it 620. And they are the laws of mourning, 
rejoicing with a chassan and kala, bride and groom, washing one's hands, blessings, the, the domains on the Shabbat of where you can go, Purim and Hanukkah. The Shabbat Amida consists of seven blessings, again, which is in contrast to the weekday, which has 18, 19. There are seven colors in a rainbow. Now, the holidays are also connected to the number seven, the Amida. Standing pray, pray, a prayer of the Jewish festivals have seven blessings, just like the Shabbat. Tishrei, the seventh month of the Jewish calendar, hosts a disproportionate number of holidays compared to the other months. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret, and also Simchat Torah. Now, there are seven festival days in the year, altogether, especially in Eretz Yisrael. Two days of Pesach, one day of Shavuot, one day Rosh Hashanah, one day Yom Kippur, one day Sukkot, one day Shemini Atzeret. In fact, there are also seven days of Pesach, seven weeks that lead to Shavuot, and seven days in Sukkot. Now, there are seven circuits completed on Hashanah Rabbah, with the Arba Minim, this is at the end of Sukkot, with the Lulav and Esrik. The Arba Minim consists of four species, and they are made up of seven items. There is one Lulav, which is a palm branch, one Esrog, a citron, three Chadasim, myrtles, and two Arabot, willows. Also, in Simchat Torah, we circled the Bima seven times, embracing the, the Sifrei Torah, the Torah scrolls. The holiday of Sukkot celebrates the return of the seven clouds of glory, the Ananei HaKavod. When the children of Israel entered the land of Canaan, they were commanded to destroy the seven nations. Yehoshua launched a seven-day year campaign to conquer the land and another, another seven years to divide it. The walls of Yericho of Jericho sank into the ground after the Jews circled the wall for seven consecutive days, culminating in seven circuits by the ark on the seventh day, with seven priests holding seven ram's horns. In addition, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, was born and died on the seventh of Adar. In prayer, there are some very special verses that connect to seven. Again, a verse to God who stretches out his hands and fulfills everything's needs. Again, this verse and another, it has seven words to it. And also the verse, which we say in the Kaddish. Again, both of these verses have the ability to earn a person's place in the world to come. May his name be, be, be great forever. Also a mourner traditionally recites the Kaddish prayer to sanctify God's name a minimum of seven times a day. There are seven commandments that were given to the descendants of Noah, called the Noahide laws, which include all of humanity. They were given to mankind to maintain human civilization to prevent it from deteriorating into anarchy. They are not to kill, not to steal, not to be involved in illicit sexual relations, not to take a limb from a living animal, not to worship idols, blasphemy, and to establish civil laws. There are seven types of produce that the land of Israel is praised for. Wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. All of these teach us about a measurement from which we can decide Jewish law. Wheat, the Achilles pras, half a loaf of wheat connected to the leprous house is a measurement of time, of how long it, the, it takes for the coin to uh, call it uh, un, uh, uh, defiled. Barley, connected to the amount of a dead human remain that defiles a person by touching it or being under the roof as well. Wine, connected to revit, how much wine must, uh, has to drink to fulfill his obligation. For example, for the four arba cups, for the four cups on Pesach, when a person has to drink the four cups of wine. Fig, the amount of a fig that makes one culpable for carrying in a public domain on the Shabbat. Pomegranates, that if you have a hole in a wooden vessel big enough to allow one pomegranate to pass through, it changes its status from being impure and to become something that is ritually pure. An olive, what we call a kazayat, most forbidden foods connected to the size of an olive. And a date, the amount of food that makes one couple for eating on Yom Kippur. Now the significance of seven is also reflected in its mathematical properties. 
Within the common decimal method, which is the basis of Torah counting, the counted system, the following set of properties is common to 1 and 7. One that neither of these numbers can be expressed as the product of any two whole numbers other than itself and 1. And neither is a prime factor of any other number between 1 and 10. So these numbers represent the oneness of God and the spiritual presence he has instilled in creation. Again, based on the Israel monk. The seventh factor is the placid center of it all. The inner man, who is the object of all forces, but is not part of them. How well he succeeds in shaping and maintaining his identity in accordance with the spiritual dictates of his soul is the challenge and the purpose of life. The Ne'ila service at the end of Yom Kippur concludes with the sevenfold proclamation, Hashem Hu Elohim. Got it? Hashem is God. The solemn acceptance of God's sovereignty. Rabbeinu Bachya explains that spiritual knowledge can be divided into six categories. Chakma, wisdom, bina, understanding, etza, advice, gavuras, severity, dat, knowledge, and yirat Hashem, the fear of heaven. These branches of intellectual activity are a ladder with six rungs by which one can climb up to the seventh and highest level of knowledge, the divine wisdom of Torah. The menorah that stood in the temple consisted of seven lights, three lights on each side, shining their light toward the central shaft. The central shaft represented the seventh day, the Shabbat, and the three days on each side, the three days before and after the Shabbat. Some say that the seven lights represented the seven fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Aaron, Joseph, and David, with Moshe, the greatest of all, represented by the central shaft, shedding his light to those who came before and after him. Others say that the outer lights represent the sciences and the central shaft of Torah, telling us that if one studies the sciences properly, they will shed their lights toward the Torah. There are seven heavens, seven millenniums, and may Mashiach come quickly and usher in the seventh millennium, which will be completely Shabbat, which is seven. Thank you very much. God bless, and have a good Shabbat.